Today is probably one of the most important messages I could ever preach to our church. The most important. Out of all the other sermons, out of any other message you will ever hear, this will be for the church. This is probably the most important message you will ever hear. But also, it's also one of the most difficult for many of you to believe about yourself. It's the best message you could ever hear, but it's hard to believe that this is what God says about you. We began this series last week. Pastor Danny kicked it off talking about I'm in. That's the, the series we're in, I'm in. And he talked about how I'm invited to the table. I'm invited to the table that God has prepared for us, that all, everyone is welcome, everyone. Regardless of your background, regardless of what you believe, regardless of what you look like, we are all invited to the table. How many are thankful that we are all invited to the table of God, no matter? And we've been asking the question, you know, are you in? And the response that we all obviously say is, I'm in. So let me ask you the question today, are you in? If you are, then I want you to say, I'm in. And we've been talking and we're gonna be talking about four qualities as to how God sees you. First one was I'm invited to God's family. Today we're gonna talk about how I'm invaluable to God's work. Next weekend we're gonna be talking about how I'm influential for God's glory. And then the final week, the fourth week, we're gonna be talking about how I'm invested into God's kingdom. Are you in? If you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And while you're turning, I know it's been about three or four weeks and maybe this has been done, but why don't you stand in honor of God's word today as we read it? First Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm about to jack up all the media guys because I'm totally reading a different translation than what I gave, gave you, so you're welcome for that. First Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 12, we're going to read to about 22, maybe. It says this. It says, the body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts and though it has all its parts are many, they, are, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, Let's just think about that for a minute. That would be weird. If the whole body were an eye, there would be, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. God did that. Not me. Like my name's not there, your name's not there, your neighbor's name's not there. God's name. God arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker or indispensable and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. In other words, there are some parts of the body that are unseen, but just because they're unseen, it doesn't make them any less valuable. So I want to 
preach to you today, obviously I've already said my title, but I want to preach to you from the title, I'm Invaluable. Why don't you tell your neighbor, say, I'm Invaluable. Now tell your other, your second choice, the one that you liked a little bit le the least because you told the other person first. Tell them, say, no, I'm invaluable. Like you need to have a little bit of grit. Like, no, I, I am, I'm invaluable. Father, we thank you for your presence in this room. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're going to do today. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would speak. Let us have ears to hear. Let us have eyes to see. Let our senses be heightened today to your presence. We ask that you would do something special. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said a big amen. Amen. Give someone a hug as you take a seat. Tell them they're invaluable. I didn't say kiss them. I just said give them a hug. All over here like, and got a kiss all week from your spouse. You're like, I'm going to take advantage. Have you ever seen something as you've been driving down the road, I do this every day. My wife makes fun of me, but she loves me for it and other reasons, and that is, I will drive down the road, and maybe you've done this before, and if I see something on the side of the road that someone else has discarded, have you ever seen somebody do that, and you're looking at it like, what is that? I'm that guy. And that guy, I'm the one that's like out in your front yard, like, you getting rid of this? You know, you know the statement, one man's trash is, yep, I made 80 bucks on a dishwasher that wasn't even mine, like two weeks ago, I'm not kidding. And I, and I do that, like literally, I, I will go down the road, I'll be driving, I mean, we'll have all the kids, kids could be screaming, and I'm like, oh, babe, babe. And she's like, really, really? We don't have time. I'm like, no, we got time. We got time because, because you know, I'm, I'm going to make some money. I'm going to make some money. And so I'll stop. I'll pick up dishwashers. i pick up barbecue pits. I picked up a Jeep hardtop one time. made $750. It wasn't even mine. Yeah, I've, I will tell you, in the last 12 months, I've made a few thousand dollars just from y'all's crap. <laughs> Thank you. And yes, I paid my tithe. But I, I love finding things that where one person may see it as not valuable, another person, like me, will see something that is valuable. And I want to be clear, because many people think that the word invaluable means that it's not valuable, but that is incorrect. Actually, the word invaluable means that it's something that is priceless something that's indispensable, something that is irreplaceable. It is unique in its design, and it brings value. And so when you think about how I am invaluable to God, I want you to understand that it means that you are uniquely valuable to God, that you're, you're valuable just because of who you are, that you are a child of God, that you are invaluable to God's work, invaluable. Jesus kind of explains this in a parable in the New Testament called the parable of the lost sheep, where he begins to describe a shepherd has 100 sheep and one of them goes astray. And it says that the shepherd leaves the 99 in search of the one. Because why? Because that one had so much valuable, it was willing to leave the 99 to go get it. Does not mean that the 99 were any less valuable. It just meant in that moment, that was the one that was most important right in that season. That it was invaluable and worth going to get. Now, let's take this in a practical sense, because obviously many of you probably don't have sheep. Um, you're not probably an agricultural person in that regard. Maybe you are. But let's just say shoes. I like shoes. How many like shoes? I like shoes. Um, let's just say you had 100 shoes. And you lose one of them, gone, not just one, like a pair. You lose one pair. Well, it's just one shoe. It would really matter, like, 
You've got 100, I got 99 more, what's the difference? You know, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, if I, let's just say, okay, I've got four kids. So say I lose one. Like, ah, well, I got three others. Who really cares? No, we, I would never say that because all of my kids have unique value in their own way to my heart. They're all valuable. I would never say, oh, well, I got three more, it's okay. I may feel like that sometimes, but that's not really what I... But I want you to understand that you're invaluable to God, that you were uniquely created by God, that you are invaluable because you are a child of God. I want you to think about that, that but you're also valuable because you were created on purpose for a purpose. And I hope by the end of this sermon today, you, you hear and you can't leave without saying, I'm invaluable. You're going to hear me say this probably 18,000 times in this sermon because I want you to understand that you were created to make a difference in God's church as God's church. You're invaluable. You've got to understand that you were called to God's house, that you were chosen, that, that you are capable, that you are invaluable to God's work. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, you're invaluable just the way you are, all messed up. Somebody got real gritty when they said that, too. It must have been like some marital thing going on. He said, you are all messed up. But you see, the reason why this message is so difficult for so many people is because they believe that, well, when you look at the church and we look at everything that everybody else does, we often feel like, well, I'm not good enough. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as talented as them. I, I can't. I, can't, I mean, you don't want me up here singing. I, I can't sing. I'm not as talented. I, I don't, I'm not important enough. Like, I, I'm, I don't really matter. Like, my, like my, my past, you don't know my past. My past is too bad. Like, I, I've, I've made some mistakes. I'm all jacked up. I feel completely unworthy. Like, I don't matter. Like, I, I, I don't know enough. I'm not one of those like professional scripture quoters, like the person that can be like quoting every scripture, like like photographic memory. I hate those people because I ain't that person neither. I, I can't I can't do that. I'm like I, when I walk in, I'm not spiritual enough. People ain't falling out. Like when I walk in the room, like what am I gonna do? I, I can't. I'm not one of those people that can just start praying and they like like Miss Ann Ohajun begin to pray about the lion's breath and it's like how the Holy Spirit is fierce and like all this stuff. I can't pray like that. I'm not, I'm not good enough. Let me tell you something. The biggest lie that many believe in church is this, that if I weren't here, it wouldn't matter. That my little part doesn't matter. A lot of us struggle with that. That if I wasn't here, it really wouldn't make that much of a difference. And let me tell you, that's a lie. My prayer is that you will see how you are invaluable to God's work. That you were and you are uniquely created with a divine gift, with divine passions and talents. That when God created you, he puts you at this moment in history because it's at this time that you could best glorify God, that you are invaluable to God's work. In fact, I want to show you today a metaphor. We've, we've, we've read this scripture, but I want to show you today the metaphor in which the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthians. They would have felt a little bit like us because Many of the Corinthians were not born of noble birth. They, many of them were slaves. They were not highly educated. They were not born with a silver spoon in their mouth. So, so they would have felt insecure about how, how can I make a difference building the church? How can I make a difference doing God's work? And Paul began to give them this metaphor and he compared the church, the people of God to the human body. So I want to read it again, just, just a couple parts in verse 12, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body, so it is with the body of Christ. 
Now, we all have many parts on our body. We have the thumb, we've got the knee, the spleen, you've got an Achilles heel, you've got an elbow, you've got a shoulder, you've got all your different fingers, you've got, you've got arms, you've got legs, like every part, you have many parts in your body, things seen, things unseen, but all of them serve a different purpose, all of them. Like, like, like my thumb serves a different purpose than my knee, thank God. They all have their own place. They all have their own design. Now, I wanna, I wanna play a game with you real quick, um, just for a moment. I wanna, I wanna throw up some photos. And uh, if you know what they are, I want you to tell me um, what it is. So, this isn't pictures of body parts, by the way. <laughs> so, make it clear. Let, let's start, what, what is that called? An elephant, okay? You see, like individually, it's called an elephant. Do you know what it's called when it's a group of elephants? A herd. Put that up. A herd. That's right. Good job. Y'all went to school. Okay, let's, let's throw up the next one. What, individually, what, what would this be? A lion. Okay, but do you know what it is when it's a group of lions? What is it called? A pride. Okay. Now, now the next one is, would be, what, what is this individually? Anybody know? A cheetah. My mom loves cheetahs. Cheetah print. So what would you call um, a, a group of cheetahs? Not Cheetos. <laughs> but what, what you doing? Do you know what call, a group of cheetahs are called? No, nope. you don't know. Coalitions. Okay, you got the next one. What is this called individually? It's a donkey. Okay, it's a donkey. Don't say the other one. You know what a group of donkeys are called? Careful. <laughs> Careful. Some of y'all got your kids right now like this is what y'all are. <laughs> a group of donkeys is called a? A pace. A pace, okay? All right, what is this called? You have individual, you would call this a what? It's a crow. Okay, individually it is called a crow. Do you know what a group of crows are called? Murder. Like, think about that. A murder of crows. That's scary. You didn't know this. Going to school. A murder. Okay, all right. Next you have a vulture. Individually, it's called a vulture. Do you know what a group of vultures are called? Committee. That's why we don't have committees at the church, because we don't need vultures cheaping in on saying stuff. But like, I want to get on that committee where you can go be all by yourself. <laughs> but I want, what I want you to see today is that individually, each animal has one name. It's one name. It's an elephant. It's a lion. It's a donkey. It's a cheetah. But together, they take on a new identity. Individually, they are one thing, but together, they become an entire new identity. Identity. So, okay, let's continue. I don't have pictures for this because you can look at each other. What do you call a person surrendered to Jesus? This is not hard, guys. We're in church. It's called a Christian. Another word would be a Christ follower. Another one can maybe be a disciple. But what do you call a group of people that are surrendered to Jesus? Church. The body of Christ. Individually, I'm just a follower. Together, we are his body, the body of Christ. You got to understand that we are his hands to serve people. We are his feet that deliver the gospel. We are his mouth to share encouragement. We are his heart to show love. You've got to understand that you are invaluable. You are an invaluable part to the body of Christ. Invaluable, irreplaceable. And I want you to know that anytime the enemy tries to tell you that you're not important, that, that you're not really good enough, or that you're not valuable, I want to encourage you to fight back and say, you know what? No, God created me. He sent his son for me. His spirit dwells within me. I am an invaluable part to the body of Christ. Devil, you have no power of your words over my life. God sent his son for me. 
And every part of the body matters. Every part. Think about it. First Corinthians 12. Let's read it a little bit more. 12 verses 14 and 17. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says I'm not a part of the body because I'm not the hand, does that make it any less part of the body? No. If, if an ear says I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would it make it any less part of the body? No. If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? If the whole body were an ear, how would you smell? And I see, I love this because we too often feel that our part doesn't matter. But I want you to understand that every part matters. Every part. All of it. And I love how, how Paul contrasts the difference between the eye and the ear. Let's just be honest. It would be easy for the ear to feel a little inferior to the eye. Like if you don't hear people say, I could stare into those ear holes all my life. <laughs> if they do, run. <laughs> like no one in love ever stares longly into someone's ear. You don't do that. If they do, you better break up. They got something wrong with them. Don't say that. You, no, no one ever says, let's have an ear-to-ear -ear conversation. You don't say that. It doesn't work that way. No, no one says, beauty in the ear of the beholder. Gross. I don't want to hold your ear. No one says, you're the apple of my ear. Does it make sense? So it's easy to see how the ear could feel not as important. But how do you know without the ear, you couldn't hear? Does it make it any less valuable? No. It carries a different, unique design purpose. Every part. Every part of the body matters. I want you to shout out loud, my part matters. I want you to say it till you believe it. My part matters. Your part. Your role. Your presence. Your voice. Your contribution. It all matters in the family of God. It matters in the body of Christ. Your part matters. It matters. It's hard to believe about that. That my part matters. What am I going to offer? But I love in how, again, 1 Corinthians 12, how Paul describes in this metaphor, he says, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest or least important are actually the most necessary. I love that. That those people that, that other people overlook, those people that may never get any airtime, those people that aren't on stage and, and the most visible are often the most necessary parts of the body. Because it goes down in verse 27, it begins to say, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you has a part in it. All of us. Okay, doing a little bit of research again, I, I was looking up some things and did you know, you know, you have, you have the thumb, you know, it has a purpose. You know, thumb probably gets most of the attention, a lot of the attention. You have, you have the index finger, you know, we can point, we can, we can, Look at things, point at things, you know, all that kind of, I try not to point at people in the room, that's why I do this, so you don't feel like I'm pointing at you. Another one, you have the middle finger, which we're not going to, we don't need to describe what that one is, it's, most of it doesn't glorify God. You have, you have the ring finger, which, you know, is, is beautiful, I did a wedding last night, got to put ring, people got to put rings on their finger, and it's beautiful, it's a sign, it's a signal, you know, all that. And then you have little old pinky, you know, it gets probably the least amount of attention, but did you know that your pinky carries about 50% of strength that comes from your hand. Did you know that? This little thing. Oh, the, the bone, the, the way that your body is structured. According to my research, 50% of your hand strength comes from your pinky. Did you know that? Here's another fun fact. You know the uvula? I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Uvula, little thing in your mouth. Hangs down, looks like a, you know, speed bag. Did you know that that thing can secrete enough saliva in your lifetime to fill two swimming pools? You just go swimming in your own spit. But it's important. Otherwise, you walk around like... That's why I take drinks every now and then. Get my mouth dry. Here's another one. Armpit hair. I don't know anybody wants to say... 
sign me up. <laughs> Did you know that your armpit hair diffuses natural smell to attract a mate? You know that's the purpose of your armpit hair? Women shave it. Men don't. Do you know that, that, that like literally it, the design of your armpit hair is to is to neutralize your smell. Some of y'all are like, well, you need more armpit hair. You may be sitting by someone in church where they're like, mm, they need to go talk with the mm -hmm. Gillette. Somebody needs to come. But your armpit hair has a specific design to neutralize a smell that can attract your mate. So sometimes what you do may not be as visible. But just because it's not as visible doesn't mean it's not important. Because you need all the, you need the uvula, but you can't see it. You need armpit hair, but you can't really see it. You need things in internal organs, but, but that doesn't mean you're going to see them. You don't see my heart. But just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's any less valuable. Like, like you may be a prayer warrior. You may be praying for church every single week. You may be praying for us as pastors to preach the word of God. And you may be praying for people that are lost that will come home and experience the grace of Jesus. And nobody may ever know. But that doesn't make it any less valuable. You may encourage someone in a, in a, in a lobby or, or you may encourage someone at work or you may encourage and no one else will know. But does that make it any less valuable? You may help someone feel loved by sending them a text and nobody may ever see it. But week after week, when lives are changed, week after week, when people say yes to the grace of Jesus, so often it's the things that went unseen, that your private faith that has touched the heart of our God and people got to experience public miracles all happening because of what you did behind the scenes. Nobody may ever see it. Nobody may ever know what your gift does. Nobody may ever know that you prayed for that person. You may never know the impact that you can make on the next generation and serving in Skybreak kids and youth. You may never see it. I tell our youth and our kids team all the time, the harvest in kids and youth, you hardly ever get to see it. Because they grow up and they move on, but then they remember, I remember I remember that person in my children's class. I remember that person in, in Sunday school. I remember that person. I do. You, you're probably thinking of, if you grew up in church as a child, there was, there was some people that made an impression on you that nobody maybe ever saw. There, that you may have never seen them stand up here. They may have never been going ching, ching, ching and trying to look all cool. No, you may have never seen them, but they touched the heart of a young person. They may never see it for a long time, but the, they made an impact that can save an entire family. You may never know the smile that you gave to someone in a parking lot that may have come to church that has experienced something and they've been hurt before. They, they're, they're discouraged. Maybe they feel uncomfortable. Maybe they were afraid. Maybe they were nervous. But your smile changed something. Nobody else may ever know that. But your smile could change an entire perspective for somebody. Let me say this, and I want you to hear this very clearly. The church is incomplete without your contribution. It's incomplete. It's like putting a puzzle together and missing a few pieces. It's incomplete. You can't get the entire picture. You've got to understand that you're intrinsically valuable because you are a child of God, but you also got to know that you are practically valuable because God gave you gifts. God gave you something on the inside of you. I'm reminding you today that you were called, you were chosen, you are capable, you are invaluable. And church, we've got to realize that if, if you aren't engaged, if you're not involved, if you're not serving, if you're not loving people, if you're not contributing, then hear this. There is something that God wants to be done that isn't being done. There is something that's happening that should be happening that can't happen. Have you ever been sleeping at night? I do this all the time. And, you know, you lay on your arm a certain way and your arm goes to sleep. 
You know, he kind of like kind of goes to sleep. It becomes completely useless in that moment. It's like, it's like you feel all weird. It's, it's paralyzed, essentially. It becomes, it becomes dormant, useless, like just dead weight is what it feels. Can I tell you, you are a part of the body, and the reality is part of the body has gone to sleep. paralyzed, it's dormant, it's become useless because it's asleep, it's time to wake up because the rest of the body now has to work harder. When your leg's asleep, the rest of your body has to work harder. When your arm's asleep, the rest of your body has to work harder and something isn't being, being accomplished that God wants to do when something's asleep. There's a need not being met. I want you to understand this today. There is a life that's not being changed. Want to put it a little bit more? There is someone going to hell because some are asleep. It's time to wake up, church. You, you, I want you to feel this today. It's very clear right here. We are all the body of Christ. All of us. It's more, let me explain this to you, church is not just a building that we come to. It's not just an institution that we're a part of. No, we are a living, breathing body of Christ. We are the church. We don't go to church to meet our needs. We don't come to church to meet our needs. We are the church of Jesus. We exist to meet the needs of people in our city. We exist to meet the needs of people that God has given us influence. That's what we do. That's who we are. It's obvious this is who we are. You can get mad at me all you want to. God said it. I didn't say it. I'm just telling him what I'm telling you what he said. That you are an invaluable part in the body of Christ. But some of you may be hearing this today and you're like, but what about my past? What what you don't know the things that I've done in my life? You don't know the mistakes that I've made. You don't know the thoughts that I've had. I can't be a part. I, I, I've lost my marriage. I, I, I have failed financially. How am I supposed to be a part? Can I tell you that your past doesn't disqualify you? It prepares you. It prepares you. Well, my marriage failed. I can't lead a small group. No, but you can help people heal because you're probably the greatest person to help other people heal. Well, I don't, I don't know enough. I, I, don't, I don't know the 66 books and the 44 authors in the historicity of Scripture. I'm going to tell you, I don't know everything. People, my kid asked me a question the other day. I'm like, you know what? I got to go look that back up. I don't know it. I don't know everything. You, you may not know everything, but guess what? Do you love Jesus? Do you love people? Then you know enough because that's what Jesus did. He loved his father and he loved people. And he said, well, I was addicted. Let me tell you, your story can inspire other people. Maybe your story could change someone's addiction into something that no longer keeps them bound. I want you to understand that it's not about your ability, it's about your availability when it comes to God. It's not about your ability. You've got to understand that your presence matters. It matters. It matters when you're not here. And let me just say this. It matters when during an altar call, you leave early. It matters. It matters when you leave just because you want five minutes extra to get to Cracker Barrel. It matters to those people in the room that were making a life-changing decision. They could have been on the edge of their seat of taking their own life. And you walk out and you bumped out because you're like, I got somewhere to go. Alters their whole thing. This is culture. Are you in? Are you in? Your worship matters. Your story matters. Your gifts matter. Your voice matters. Your generosity matters. Your words, your encouragement, it matters. It matters. 
Let me tell you, when you give an offering, your gifts make a difference. When you pray a prayer, you move the heart of God with your faith. When you invite someone to church, your invitation could change a life. When you greet at a door, when you listen to someone, when you open your home, when you make someone a meal, when you show the love of Jesus, guess what? When you do the things for the least of these, Jesus said, you do it for me. If you do your part and we do our part, I want you to think of what's possible if we all just did our part. If everyone did their part, the needs in our community would be met. We could bring more hope and healing to people who are hurting. More of it. Not just what we're doing, but more of it. We could help change an entire generation for the love of Christ. We could change a family and in return end up changing an entire lineage for that family. If we all did our part, we could equip and bless more pastors and churches that are in need of help. That don't know what to do. That we could share the gospel with people who are hurting that have limited access to the gospel. We could do more of it. We, we could actually, food for thought, we could start more life-giving churches in the surrounding areas and beyond to reach more people who don't know Jesus that may not be able to get here within driving distance. We could mentor more high-risk kids, not just to help them read, but to know that God cares and that God loves them and that God has a purpose for them. We could get water to those who are thirsty. We could get food to those who are hungry. Every widow and elderly person could have their needs met. Anyone feeling rejected or alone could feel the love of Christ. Every foster child and orphan would have the comfort of a loving family. Every pregnant girl who feels scared could find support. Every person that's been trapped in addiction could find freedom in Christ. Every lost person in your community, in your workplace, could have the opportunity to hear the love of Jesus. Think of what is possible if the parts that were asleep would wake up. If you would recognize that you matter, you matter to God, that you are invaluable to God's work, that your gifts and your talents are valuable to him just because you are you. That you are the body of Christ. I'm saying it again, you are invaluable to God's work. I hope you can't get that out of your head for the rest of the day. And I promise you, I promise you, with everything in me, I'm going to do my part. Everything in me. Our pastors, our family, our staff, we're going to do our part. I promise you that. And in everything in you, I want to encourage you to do your part. And every part is as equally important to the family of God. The ear, the eye, the nose, the knee, the mouth, it's all important. When we all do our parts, people aren't going to look on and say, what, a a church? They're just, no. You know what they're going to say? Skybreak? The church? Oh, my gosh. Our city is different because that church is here. Our community is different because Skybreak is here. My life is changed because the church is here. The church showed up. We didn't just come sit in the pews and say, oh, worthy is God, and we leave and never be the church. We are the body. We come together to edify. We come together to worship a living God. So that way, when we walk back out of here, we can be the church. We can be the body of Christ to our world. Father, I thank you for every single person in this room and that's under the sound of my voice from the other side of the screen. I pray today, God, that we would sense that you've created us and that we are irreplaceable to your work. That without our part being done, there's something that you want to do that's not happening. that we are invaluable to your work, Jesus. That you have created us unique, all different, all serving a different purpose, but coming together under one name and one body to glorify God. I pray, Lord, that we understand that we are, we, we matter to you. 
that every part matters. You've called us for a divine purpose, to serve your church. It's not just something that we attend occasionally, but it's something that we are a part of as the body of Christ. And I pray, Lord, that those who are asleep would wake up. That those that feel that they're not good enough would know that, God, you, are love, you love them and you are with them, and, God, that they matter. all of you to look at me just for a moment. There may be some of you here today that that maybe you've just you've just been attending. Can I say that my prayer to you is that if if you've just started attending, I want you to understand I understand that you're just trying to figure this whole thing out and that's what this is for. To understand what the body of Christ is all about. To understand who Jesus is. But my prayer, and we will do everything we can to make this happen, is that after you've been coming for a little while, that you become so uncomfortable that because you're not a part. To know that my part matters, that your part matters. Because we cannot be the church of Christ, we cannot be the body of Christ, Asleep, we must be awake. And you may be here saying, you know, there's more for me. I've got something to offer. I mean, I've, I've been just attending. I've just been coming, and it's time that I wake up. Or maybe you, you've been, maybe you've been a part, and you've been serving, but you kind of just do a little bit here and there, and there's some other gifts. There's some other talents in you that you have not yet expressed. That you have a gift to do something, but you just kind of held it back. Because you're like, you know, I may not be as good as them or, or, or you know, I don't really have time or, you know, all the different excuses that we, we like to give ourselves. Can I challenge you today that your part matters? Matter of fact, I want to give a call to action right now. If you are sitting here saying there's more for me and I have something to offer and I'm not serving and I want to learn about serving, I want to be a part of the team. Or you're sitting here and you're saying I'm a part of the team but I can do more. There's more gifts in me. There's more talents in me. There's more that God wants to do through me. Then I just want you to text the word I'm in. It's popping up on the screen to 97,000. Just text it. You're going to have a form. It's going to give us your name. And you're going to tick one of those boxes. I want to begin serving. Or there's more that I can do. Wherever that fits. If you're new, be coming for a few weeks. Just keep coming. Experience the love of Christ to know that you are now a part when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. We're not, we're not just soldiers in an army, we're warriors. So if that's you today, I want you just to text. And let me say this, if you're online, you're not exempt. Because if you're in another city, guess what? What if God wants to start something in that city and he wants to use you for it? You're not exempt. Well, I'm five and a half hours away, I live in other towns. Great. You can be a part too. We want to help you. Because we want to be able to do everything we can in the sphere of influence that God has given us to be the body of Christ to those who are hurting and those who are lost so that way they can capture the extraordinary life that God has for them. So just text the number. Why wait? Why not do what God already said to do? There's also maybe some of you in this room every eye closed for a moment. Going back to that story about the hundred sheep and the shepherd. The one that went astray, maybe, maybe you're the one. Maybe you've gone astray, maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've walked away life has hit you and you've become too much and kind of fell into a a dark hole. I want you to know that the shepherd is always looking for the lost one. The Bible tells us that anyone who calls on the name of Jesus says shall be saved. Well, what does that mean? That means that all of your sins are forgiven and that you don't just become 
a better version of you, the Bible says that you become brand new. The old is gone. The new life has come. That you can be born again in the family of God. Your part will matter. Your story matters. Maybe that's you today. You say, I, need to know, I want to know Jesus. Or I've walked away and I need to come back. Because let me tell you, friend, Jesus loves you with everything in him. There's actually nothing that you can do, Scripture says, that can separate you from the love of God. It says, nor height, nor death, nor angels, nor demons, nor anything on, above and beneath the earth. No, nothing, it says, can separate you from the love of God. And he loves you so much that he's not going to just leave you where you are, but become a journey that's called a, a very churchy theological word called sanctification. Basically meaning that every step and every day begins to be a new work that God is doing and that it becomes a journey of becoming more and more like Jesus every day. When you make a decision, it's not an overnight shift but it's a daily process of becoming more like Christ. So if that's you today, you're one of those two groups of people, want to know Jesus, or I need to come back. I knew him, but I've walked away, and I want to rededicate my life today. If that's you today, with every eye closed, I'm going to count down from three, and I just want you to lift up your hand. So I know who I'm praying for today. I'm praying with. If we're going to pray a prayer together, and repeat it. It's the salvation prayer, something that Scripture tells us to do. I'm not going to call you to the front. I'm not going to ask you to do anything other than just, I just want to know who you are. We have there's something we want to give you. We have a free Bible that we actually want to put in your hands. We have some next steps that help you in this journey that we'd love to give to you. But I just right now in this moment want to know, if that's you, I want to know who I'm praying with. So with every eye closed, when I count down from three, if that's you, I just want to slip, want you to slip up your hand. Three, two, one. If that's you, just slip up your hand. Lift them up. Thank you, Jesus. I see those hands. I see those hands. From the floor to the risers, I see you. From the front to the back, I see you. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just a moment more, I see those hands. And most importantly, God sees you. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. Now I want us to pray that prayer I was talking about. We're going to repeat it out loud where our ears can hear us. We're going to activate our faith together. Maybe you've prayed this prayer a hundred times because you've been in church. Let's pray it in support of those who are saying it for the very first time or those who are saying it to rededicate their life today. Let's say it out loud, even in your home. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Help me to live a new life in you. God, I accept you as Lord and leader of my life. Thank you. For sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for me. And today I ask that you would forgive me of all my sin and help me to live this new life. I thank you for rising from the dead for me to give me new life. I place my hope in you today. I place my faith in you. And ultimately I put my trust in you. Jesus' name I pray. Everyone said a big amen. If you just made the decision to invite God into your life, we would love to know. You can text SC SAVE to 97000. That way we can help equip you with some next steps for you to take along this new journey. If this message was a blessing to your life and you'd like to help support Skybreak financially, you can give online using the Skybreak Church app. Well, hey, we would love for you to join us in person this upcoming Sunday morning at 9.15. But until then, we hope you have a great week and we will see you Sunday.